Good morning, church. You doing okay this morning? Good morning, church. I think I was muted there. There we go. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? If you want to get standed up here, stood up, stand up with us. Right? Worship. Are you happy you came to the house of the Lord this morning? You know, it doesn't matter what happens during the week. We can come here and be encouraged by brothers and sisters in the faith. And we can turn our minds off to distractions outside the these walls and focus on God and give him praise and honor. Thank you, Lord. I love you this morning. Thank you, Jesus. of this life of grown.
Happy National Hymn Weekend. <laughs> it is. And all the old people said amen. <laughs> Just joking. Me too. <laughs> Morning, good morning. Let's dedicate the service to the Lord. Natalie, come. Amen. It is um, across the nations that um, they're honoring the past. They're honoring the hymnals this weekend. That's why we've been singing some of the golden oldies. Amen. And uh, we ought not to forget our heritage. So let's dedicate the service this morning to the Lord together. I'm going to ask Natalie to lead us in prayer. I'll hold the mic. Praise God. Amen. Amen. It's not church as usual this morning. Amen. If you came in with church as usual, it's not going to happen because we want more of God. Amen? Amen. If you're hungry and thirsty for more, then just, you know, just begin to worship God and say, God, we are so in need of you today. Amen. If this is a day and time that we need our nation to turn around, we need to pray and put our face on the carpet and say, God, we know that you are able to raise up a generation, not for our sake, but for the sake of the next generation, for these babies, for our teenagers. We pray in Jesus' name this morning, Father. Lord, we raise our voices to the throne room of the Father because we know that you hear us, Lord. When we begin to pray and fast and call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, there is power in your name, Father. We want the nations of Canada to know that Jesus rules and reigns, that the churches are not dead, Father, that they are not sleeping, but alive, Father God, alive unto God. We thank you, Lord. Renew us this morning, Father. We need an infusion of your spirit, oh God, to transform us to the image of Christ as never before, Father. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. That's good.
That's how church was supposed to be, you know what I mean? All of us, every race, every color, every nation, every age. And so we do our best to play some of the old songs, we try to write some of our own songs, play some of the new songs to appease everybody, make everybody feel welcome at home. And the song I'm going to sing, and I just want to share a verse. I heard the guy who wrote the song. I didn't write it, unfortunately. I'd be a lot richer if I did, I'm sure. But uh, it's called Reckless Love. And, and he's not talking saying that God is reckless. Because God is not reckless. But I'm going to read a, a parable here in a minute. Now the tax collectors and the sinners were all gathered around here, Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. He said, suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders. And he goes home and he calls all his friends, his neighbors, and he tells them together, he says, rejoice with me, I found my lost sheep. I tell you the same way, there's more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over the 99 righteous persons who don't need to repent. So, some would say that leaving the 99 to find the one would be reckless. But I'm glad that he put me over his shoulders. And he walked me home. <laughs> and he rejoiced. So, sometimes it's easy for our minds to be offended by a word in a song. That's okay. Sometimes it's good to be offended. Sometimes God's trying to wake us up to something else. So, as we sometimes sing some of these new songs, if you don't like it, that's okay. We try to find the truth. We try to find the pure, honest worship in it. And I pray that God would touch you and, and speak to you and do things in your life that I never thought possible. So I'm thankful that He 
his love was reckless for us. And uh, there's no shadow that he wouldn't light up, no mountain he wouldn't climb up to come after us. And if there's no wall he wouldn't kick down, and lie he wouldn't tear down to come after us. In Jesus' name. For I spoke a word, you were singing over me. So, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. Cause you have been so, so kind to me. So you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me, Jesus. Snow wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall, there's no wall you won't kick down. Lie, you won't tear down. Coming out in me, yeah. no shadow. You won't light up. Mountain, you won't climb up. Coming out in me, no wall. You won't kick down. Lie, you won't tear down. Coming out in me, no shadow. No shadow.
Jesus. 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 Do you remember when you were lost? Without hope? Do you remember that day when, when Jesus broke through with his love and his light? And he lit up your darkness, your dark soul that was bound. You see, Jesus didn't come to make good people better. He came to deliver the damned. He came to make sinners saints. There's no one righteous, no, not one. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But we're thankful that while Adam sinned and through one man's disobedience, sin and his transgression brought sin into the world. But we're thankful for the obedience of that one man from heaven, that his obedience brought righteousness. The Bible says in Psalm 67, God be merciful to us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us. So why does the psalmist pray that God would be merciful to us because we could not endure the wrath of God, because we could not endure the justice of God that would bring the wrath. Only He could step in our place and be our substitute. And so God has blessed us. Amen. What an appropriate scripture for this day. He didn't know my message. Leaving the 99 and going for the one. And God has caused his face to shine upon us. Why has God blessed you and me and us? Why has he caused his face to shine upon us? This is why. Verse 2 tells us that your way may be known on the earth. That through his church, his living body on the earth, his way may be known. God didn't leave it for the governments to do it because we are the kingdom of God. We are the government of God. We represent a kingdom that is above every other kingdom. Daniel spoke about that establishing in the latter days. That your way may be known on the earth and your salvation among all nations. His deliverance, his salvation, him coming to set the captive free would be known in all nations. Beloved, we don't have to leave our country, but we can come to the nation of Canada and find that the nations of the world have come to this great nation here. We don't have to take a flight across. We just have to cross the street to find the nations of the world, even living in a city called Brantford, Paris, St. George. God has brought the nations here to us. Can we take a moment? I'm sure you have a loved one. I'm sure you have a neighbor. I'm sure you know some colleague or some school person that doesn't know this God. So in our prayer life right now, as a church, could we just agree for that lost soul? And can we just entreat the throne of God and pray? After all, isn't his house a house of prayer? Not for some nations, but for all. Let's agree right now. What a privilege. Not just to pray, but to intercede. You see, an intercessor is one who stands in the gap. What is he doing standing in the gap? He's making up the difference. He's pulling one world into the other. Jesus stretched out his arms and he pulled heaven down to earth so that we could taste heaven now. So you be an intercessor and you fill the gap for that lost soul, that lost son, that lost spouse, that lost neighbor, that lost relative right now. Because while 
Paul said, I am bound. He said, the word of God is not bound. Let's pray right now for nations. Let them know in North America that there is a church praying in the heavenlies right now. Father, we, we as a church right here in our city, amongst many churches, as the people of God, we call upon your holy name because we know there's authority in your name to see deliverance come not only to the nation of Canada from coast to coast, but, oh God, in North America and South America. We want the nations of the world in Chile, in South America, in Europe, to know that we are praying that your way would be made known today. God, bring back the prodigal sons and daughters of this house. Bring back the sons of this house. Call back the daughters of this house. The names that are written on the prayer sheets, the names that we carry before you as, as the royal priesthood, and we stand before your courts today, God, asking you to, to awaken the senses of the prodigal that is running from you right now. Bring them home. Would you intercede right now? The burden of the Lord is that none should perish. The burden of the Lord is that they should be carried, as Christian said, back on the shoulders of the, of the Lamb of God before his throne. So God, set them free even now. Lord, they may run from us, but they cannot run from your holy presence. You hold the keys of conversion. You hold the keys of repentance. You hold the keys of our hearts, oh God. So we thank you, God. They may got on a ship. They might got on a plane. They may run far away from their natural family. But we thank you that the omnipresence of God is, is global. And the eyes of the Lord are searching as we are praying, church, as we are calling upon the living God, church, as we are invoking God for our sons and our daughters to come home. Oh, the overwhelming love of God. Sing it, Kristen. Even now, God, even now, God, search them out in the nations of the world. Say, yes, Lord. Yes, God. So all you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down.
just this, uh, the picture of the shepherd and what the shepherd does when the sheep is away. I grew up on a sheep farm, as some of you know. And when you know there's a sheep missing, you're focused on finding that sheep. You're focused and you get all the help you can and you find the sheep. But what do you do when you find it? You set it free if it's stuck. That's what the Lord does. He sets us free. Or if the sheep is uh, weak because it's sick, it's injured or whatever, there's healing. The shepherd touches that sheep. The word for, for healing in, in Japanese is laying on of hands. Isn't that incredible? That's, that's what the shepherd does. He lays his hands on that sheep and heals it. Just want to share a scripture also here this morning. Me and my wife read in Kings. The king of Assyria carried away the Israelites unto Assyria because the Israelites or the, the people of Israel obeyed not the voice of the Lord their God, but transgressed his covenant and all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded and would not hear them nor do them. So it starts by hearing. So may, may our ears be opened and may the ears be opened in our country. May the ears be opened because the word will change us. Thank you, Lord. That's good, good word. Word, good word. <laughs> Take a minute, greet one another before you're seated. Thank you, band. God bless you.
Praise God. Amen. It's good to see all of you this morning. Good morning. It's a good morning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We just want to welcome you if you're here for the first time. We just want to see where you are. So we want to give you a little something and we want to say welcome. If you need us, we're here for you. You can call the office and uh, we can meet and have coffee together. So we're glad you're in the house of God. And I just want to... We know we were away during the flood and all this, you know, a state of emergency of Brantford and other cities that were affected. But can we remember this, uh, the young family that uh, lost a three-year-old boy? The mother was trying to grip that little boy. And uh, I couldn't even imagine how she's feeling right now and how the family, but the whole community came together. And uh, I saw online they were singing Amazing Grace. And they were all weeping. They said, you know, we are affected because of this. You know, it's... So we want to pray as a church, amen? And I know we're doing the offering now, but can we just take a, a little time? And Father, we thank you for this beautiful family and the mother, Lord, especially as uh, she's grieving and the father and the families and the community. And I thank you, Lord, that as they are searching for this little boy, that they will find him, Father. And we give you thanks in the midst of tragedy and in the midst of this horrible thing that happened, Lord, to this family. We thank you for a community that are surrounding them, Jesus. And we are praying too, Father. And in Jesus' name, we ask for comfort and for the love of God to surround them. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on up. Amen. God bless you. I just want to share with you for the offering uh, just a small passage of the word that says this. Now Jesus sat opposite the treasury and saw how people put money in the treasury, and many who were rich put in much. Then one poor widow came and threw in two mites, which make, uh, which make a quadrant. So he called his disciple to himself and said to them, I surely I said to you that this poor widow has put in more than all those who have given to the treasury, for they all put in out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty put in all that she had, or her whole livelihood. Before, I, would just, I just want to give you that small passage to just tell you and just tell, exhort us uh, that Jesus is looking at not how much we give, but how we give. Amen? It's not how much we give that, we, that will make God satisfied. It's how you give. You may give out of your abundance or out of your poverty, but it's the stance of your heart and the amount of your faith that you give unto the offering that will make the difference and that will touch God's heart. Amen? God bless you. Thank you, Lord, for being a good God. Lord, I pray that we will be a church that doesn't give out of abundance, but of poverty of spirit, poverty of finances and resources. Lord, I pray that we will worship you truly in spirit and in truth. Lord, I pray that we will uh, be light and salt to the world. Lord, that we will be a beacon of hope in Brantford and and uh, surrounding areas. Lord, bless every ministry out of this house. Lord, bless the giver. May we worship you, Lord, in all that we say and do. In Jesus' name, amen. I still have the mic. We can show the announcement. Church announcement. 50 Plus is meeting Thursday, March 8th at 11.30 a.m. March break, we are going to be having a kids cooking camp for children ages 10 and up. They're going to be having a really great time. John is going to be teaching them a lot of stuff about different meals that they can make and just helping each other baking. Um, and then also we're going to be having a time of devotional um, before we start making the meals and they even get to enjoy the meals when they're done. So it's going to be really fun, um, full week. Uh, 9.30 to 12 p.m., and it's going to be $30 for the uh, Tuesday to Friday. Men's breakfast will be on March 17th at 8.30 a.m. Movie night will be on March 18th at 6 p.m. Our One Heart, One Way Women's Conference is fast approaching, and the registration deadline is Sunday, March 11th, so you want to get registered as soon as possible. We are also in need of volunteers as well. So if you have registered or you're wanting to register, but you also want to help, please sign up um, with our volunteer forms. 
You really don't want to miss it. It's for all women of all ages. We really encourage you to come out. General tickets are $55. Student tickets are $25. You don't want to miss this free. There is wrinkle releaser. I was just spraying myself. Wrinkle release me, Lord. Now, when I looked closer, it, it's downy. It's for your garments. So I guess I'll just spray the outfit and give it back. If you are one of those women who gets that in your belly, you get the fire down inside of you, you will become one word, unstoppable. Unstoppable. <laughs> then my destiny is not based on my performance, but rather my position as being a daughter of the King of Kings. Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. And in a moment, 18 years of attack, 18 years of pain, 18 years of abuse from the enemy of her soul was done, taken care of, absolutely destroyed. What? In Jesus, the broken are made whole, the lost become found, and all our needs are met. My story is about God answering my prayers. He's given me more than I could ever ask or hope for, and he's given me more than I could ever need. So that's why I worship. Out of the outpouring of what God has done in my life, my hope is that other people would experience Jesus the same way. Sunday is March 25th. We are going to be having a Good Friday service on Friday, March 30th, and it's going to be at 10.30 a.m. Also, that same day, we are going to be having a Youth and Young Adults Good Friday service, and that's going to be at 7.30 p.m. on the same Friday, March 30th. So you don't want to miss out on those two services. All are welcome. This has been your church announcement. Have a blessed day. All right, that's wonderful, isn't it? Thank God. We appreciate all the media teams and all the ushers and greeters that keep the church functioning. Amen. Uh, so good to see you this morning. I just, um, I'm going to call up Janice, JJ, Janice and Jay, uh, mother and son team. Last week we heard from Alice who came back from South America and uh, Nicaragua, I'm sorry. And uh, this week, we're sending uh, a couple to uh, Africa, to uh, near Kilimanjaro. So they'll be sharing uh, just for a few minutes to let you know how we can pray for them as they leave this week. Jay, tell us your story about you going back for after a, yes. since you were like eight? I think it was eight. Yeah. Yeah, I really wanted to take a, just a really quick moment to just kind of pick up where the worship left off about the prodigal son. Because I've, I've been the prodigal son twice over, where I returned to the Lord back as a teenager, a young adult, went off to Bible college, and then had a, um, kind of a bit of a falling way after that. And the Lord just keeps bringing us back, bringing us back. Um, I've been attending the church here for one year. I've had many, many experiences with, with God here at the altar, here and listening to messages and things like that. But one of the big things that really started to grip my heart is when we, as my mom's been always been going to Africa for tw about 25 years now, and even in my ministry days, back when I was a pastor, I wasn't really kind of behind my mom. I was for her and prayed for her, but really didn't have a heart for ministry in Africa because I had so many hurt emotions when I was there. I went to boarding school. I felt abandoned. I had all of these things happen to me when I was eight years old and got taken to, 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 the, to the school to be there for two weeks without my mom. 
So it was a very difficult time. And then I came back and I struggled in school. And so years and years and years went on. And I remember uh, one Sunday, I was just sitting over here by the, by the TV camera here. And uh, the guest speaker was speaking about missions. And God just really got a hold of my heart. And my mom turned to me and she just, she started weeping. And she says, I want to apologize I'm so sorry for taking you to that, to that boarding school and leaving you there so you felt abandoned. And the, the, the father's heart just touched me and gripped me where I just began to weep. And it was God unlocked something from my heart. And it says in, in Psalms chapter 2, it says, I will give the nations as your inheritance and the ends of the earth as your possession. So there's something in Africa that is my inheritance. There's something in Africa that is my possession, that is my godly right, and I'm going back to go find that. And so when I was thinking about the prodigal son, um, my message is that we're going to be speaking there at some Bible colleges and then some, some churches, is the story of the prodigal son, my story of, of how God is continually bringing me back, bringing me back. And there's something in the story of the prodigal son where the father sees him from a distance, and he's moved with compassion. That whole thing about what happened when the father ran, to the, from, ran from the home to the son? What happens in that moment? And that's what I'm going to go and tell the people in Africa about and tell them to return. And as we were sitting in worship this morning, I just felt God just say to me, he said that this is the year of the prodigal. This is the year of the prodigal for this house. This is the year of prodigal for my house. And we have to believe it because I believe that as I was sitting in worship, I just felt the Lord just say to me, he says, I'm... I'm I'm seeing, I'm moving with compassion, and I'm running, and that's an exciting thing. About all those things, about those words, about the, product, the father's running and move with compassion. So I've got to go to Africa to see. So as I was driving really quickly, last thing, when I was driving to Windsor back in November, I was driving down the highway and just kind of spending time with the Lord, and I saw this tree in the middle of a farmer's field. And I looked at the tree, and it had all the leaves still on the tree, and I just felt, as I was looking at that tree, I felt God say to me that those leaves that are on that tree is your inheritance in Africa. Don't you want to see that? So I want to encourage you, if you've got something in your heart that's in your inheritance, if God has put something on your heart to go do something, just go do it, because that's your inheritance. So I'm excited to go. I'm getting excited. I wore my Africa shirt. I'm getting all jacked up for this trip. We're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, we're going for two weeks, so we do... I'm going to send um, Pastor Ray kind of an itinerary of what we're going to be doing, so we do appreciate your prayers and support, and um, yeah. So you know how happy I am. This is going to be a wonderful trip. So what I felt was when he said, Mom, I'm coming for my inheritance, I thought he needs to see everything. So we will arrive in Kilimanjaro, on a small mountain, and if it's a nice day, we'll see Mount Kilimanjaro. Uh, we're going to share in a Bible school there that we were instrumental many, many years ago in the 80s to help start up. And then we're going to Mwanza. Mwanza's on Lake Victoria. And what I've got planned for him is this. My one other son said, Mom, I'm going to give you $300 so you can have a big party while you're there. So I got thinking about that, a big party. So what I've done is I've invited, because I've been in Africa for many years, so I'm inviting some of the grown-up children and some of the workers from the first orphanage that we had for 10 years. I'm inviting the grown-up children from the uh, street children's ministry that ran for seven years. And then I came home and had grandchildren and all of that. And then in 19, well, actually four years ago, the Lord said, showed me through dream and speaking that I was supposed to go back. And I told the Lord, no, I can't go back because one, I'm getting old. And two, I have this oxygen thing. And also I said, Lord, I don't have money to go back. And this is what he told me. So I want you to hear this because God is faithful. He said, if you give me everything you have, I'll give you everything you need. And God is faithful. 
So we're also looking after now children in a home that were on the streets. So those children have been there. They're going to be at the party. And some of the pastors that we work with, they're going to be at the party. So he's going to see and feel all of those generational people. He, he, he's going to be hearing stories upon stories. And then also, this is how busy he's going to be in his two weeks. I'm staying for six weeks. He's staying for two. So he's got to speak twice in the Bible school. He has to go to the party and listen for hours and hours. He has to paint two rooms in our house. We have still 60, 70 children still living on the streets, hungry, homeless kids. That's where I'm sending him, downtown to hear the heartbeat of the father. So uh, what else? He's going to be speaking in two churches. And the best of all, we've arranged uh, in one of the villages a two-day crusade. And the churches in the village are getting together and cooperating. So it could be a lovely big crusade. So we're just asking for prayer that the word of the Lord, the Father says that his word will not return unto him void, but it will accomplish what he's sending it forth to do. So we, we believe people will be saved and healed and delivered because we're going to preach his word and we're going to see signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. So just pray for us. We're, we're grateful that we're in this beautiful church now. We're really enjoying the fellowship here and the music, and I love Pastor Ray's preaching. So thank you so much for letting us share. Amen, amen. I think at the end of the service, we're going to be busy, so we're going to pray with you now. All right, I'm going to ask some of my African friends, uh, Chakuma, Sammy, and uh, the clerks, any of you want to come up? I know Brother Hilton's not well. We want to remember them in prayer. Would you uh, just come, pastoral staff, Margaret? And uh, let's just pray over them, can we, as we uh, believe the Lord to uh, minister to them? Uh, Africa is not a country, it's a continent, and uh, we just want to surround them as they go to Tanzania, and I always wanted to go to Mount Kilimanjaro, I just love that name, and uh, Sammy, come over here and just lead us in prayer, and let's pray together, shall we? Send them with our blessing uh, this morning. Father, we so grateful to go to you this morning. We thank you, God, for your release to go to to let your children go back, oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for the anointing of the Holy Ghost to rest upon them, oh God, as they go by the power of your spirit you, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you that you that go before them, you will neither slumber nor sleep, oh God. I pray, oh God, that you make your way, oh God, before them by the power of your spirit in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, oh God, that Anything that has been planned by the enemy, O oh God, will not stand, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. But you grant them favor, O oh God, and grace in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, O oh God, for your head of protection, O oh God, around them, O oh God, by the power of your spirit. I pray, O oh God, for your sustaining power, O oh God, your healing grace, O oh God, even to, to go before them. And Lord, as they open their mouths, O oh God, even to speak, O oh God, I pray that you will give them liberty in the spirit, O oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We give you praise and we give you glory. Protect them, O God, from any onslaught to God of the enemy. I thank you, O God, that any weapon that comes against them, O God, will not stand, O God. When the enemy comes in one direction, cause him to flee in many directions, O God. I pray that you grant them traveling mercies, O God, by the power of your spirit. We give you praise. And thank you, O God, for the testimonies, O God, that they will bring back, O God, because of what you have done. Be glorified. And be exalted, O oh God. We thank you for restoring our brother, O oh God. We thank you for bringing him back to yourself, O oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray, O oh God, that may today, O oh God, be the beginning, O oh God, of a new thing, O oh God, that you do in his life. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We give you praise and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.
Amen. Thank you, brother. Just going to make a short word this morning. Um, just want to uh, just want to acknowledge. Just want to give our condolences again to Doug Folds. Uh, his his mom passed away, passed on to glory, in her. 93rd year, so uh, would you, after the service, show some love to Doug and uh, Fran Foles uh, for that. Tonight, Pastor Ken will be uh, sharing and leading us in the old hymnals, and uh, you know, he's Mr. Hymnal himself, as you well know, and he'll be leading us tonight in, a, in that time of just sharing and giving you some historicals uh, where some of the hymns originated so that'll be good. We will be ending this service a little bit early today, and I just want to also acknowledge our 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 PC candidate, Will Bauma, is with us, and uh, we welcome you, and we are praying for uh, <clears throat> we are praying for them, as uh, you know, the PC party is is looking for a leader. And uh, between March 2nd and the 8th, I believe, if you're, if you're a member of the PC party, you're welcome to uh, vote for a candidate of your choice. There's five in the running, and we have been approached uh, uh, by Mr. Ford's office and friends of ours, uh, and that he will be here after the service today. We'll be ending the service. So if you want to stay back and listen to Doug Ford, he'll be here, God willing, to uh, speak, and you can ask him questions and so on. I'm also delighted to uh, uh, see that uh, professor, he was a professor, Dr. Joe Daniels is with us, and he's a former member of uh, parliament with the, uh, uh, with our President Harper, and he's standing in the back, and just to welcome him, he's now the Honorary Council General of Uzbekistan, and uh, so we welcome you, uh, Dr. Daniels as well, and also accompanying him, my good friend is Kamar Khan, and Kamar Khan is the, uh, he's the president of the Christian Cultural Association of South Asians of Canada, and he lives in the Toronto, Toronto area, and he's with us as well, and, and uh, of course, um, he's probably just trying to talk, track down where uh, Mr. Ford is. So that will be taking place uh, shortly after our service today, this morning. I know some of our folks are not well, so we want to keep them in prayer. Um, this week, as we go to the Word, um, um, the back one is not on. If someone could cl just kind of mirror that. Uh, this week, as you know that Billy Graham went to be with the Lord, and, um, you know... <laughs> It was seven days after the Parkland, Florida massacre that the uh, beloved worldwide evangelist graduated at 99 years old. You know, my wife said to me shortly after she heard his passing on Wednesday morning, she said he left the 99 to go for the one. And isn't it something how the Lord took him on his 99th year? And I wanted to finish that phrase and say, he leaves at 99 to go to the one. Amen? Amen. Now, I don't know why I have to preface this, but I have to preface this because of critics. And, you know, he may not be our denominational bent, but we are kingdom-minded people. We may not agree on every doctrinal position. We may have not agreed on everything, but do I really have to say that? He was a statesman. He was an evangelist. He was focused on what God had called him to do. Amen? And, I mean, if we're going to poke holes at him, we might as well poke holes at King David for committing adultery, at Abraham for going after Hagar. Some people poke holes at me for using this, this table. Say, what are you using this table for and not a pulpit? You know, uh, you know, what's more important, the pulpit or this or the message? 
This is from my table to your table. So come and sit around my table as I share the word with you this morning. You see, we can major on minors, but we must have a commonality, and that is the essentials of the gospel. On the, non, on the non-essentials, there has to be some liberty. But in everything, there has to be charity. In everything, there has to be love. Amen? Because the core and the crux of the message is the centrality of the cross of Jesus Christ, the Almighty One. And that's why we have the cross central. And if you weren't part of the old, uh, you know, where we came from, our old heritage, this cross used to be on the old building. As you drove under the underpass uh, of the old building, this was the cross that was above that old underpass. So we remember our heritage. We remember our past, but we also remember the cross of Christ, which is central, and that is why I preach from behind the cross of Jesus Christ in many ways than one. Amen? Billy Graham died on the Jewish calendar. It was Adar 6. Some people said it was Adar 7, but it wasn't. It was Adar 6. What is Adar? He died one week before Purim begins. You know what Purim is from the book of Esther, right? But, but Moses died on Adar 7. And Billy Graham died the day before. Adar 7 is when the Jews commemorate the death of Moses. Isn't it something? What will happen? They say certain things. Some prophets have prophesied certain things will happen. I don't know what's going to happen. The Lord knows all that he's going to fulfill. Billy Graham also died 77 days from 12-6, December 6, when Donald Trump proclaimed that Israel is the capital of Jerusalem. At exactly 29,000 days from the Evian Conference in 1938, Billy Graham died 40 days before First Fruits, Resurrection Sunday. Does any of that mean anything? It may mean something on the peripheral, but the main thing I'm excited about is that this man could have preached a lot of things, but he preached one message, the centrality of the cross of Jesus Christ. He proclaimed the gospel to over 215 million souls worldwide in 185 nations. And when you have begun to do close to that, maybe you might have a voice to criticize. But until then, it's our high duty to pray for the men of God. It is high duty to pray for the evangelists because there is fivefold ministry, as according to Ephesians chapter 4, that make up the hand of God in the earth. And one of those ministries is the office of the evangelist. Paul said to Timothy, He said, even if you are not called to be an evangelist, Timothy, do the work of an evangelist. We are all called to be soul winners. All of us, not some of us. You see, because this fivefold ministry talks about reaching, reaching, it's directional. It's about enlightening the church to go out and reach that one. Isn't that what Jesus did? Jesus is the greatest evangelist. He left the portals of glory. He left the the glamour and the grandeur of heaven. And he came down for us who are far off. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Not when we were seeking God, not when we were saints, not when we were righteous, but while we were yet in our sins, Christ died for us us. That is the hallmark of the Christian message. And we must never forget why Jesus came. So often you would hear Billy Graham open his Bible to John 3, 16. The greatest verse for evangelism. For Say it with me. For God 
so love the world that he gave. Love gives. He gave his best. He didn't give a paycheck. He didn't give the materials of heaven. He didn't give angels. He gave his only son. He gave himself. For God so loved the world. He loved us. That he gave his only son, his begotten son, that whosoever believes in him, say it, should not perish. That you and I should not perish, but have eternal life. That's the message. And he who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that has come, that light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. You see, if we want to come to the cross, that he will deal with our deeds. He will deal with our sins. He'll deal with our damnation. Do you know, Billy Graham has met every president since Harry Truman. And he has witnessed to presidents after presidents about their soul. George W. Bush will tell you that he had a bad drinking problem. And George W. Bush will tell you that he, that Billy Graham was instrumental in helping his, his way, finding his way back to the cross. Billy Graham shared the gospel with him and helped him break that addiction. Many say that George W. Bush would not have been president if it wasn't for the encounter that he had in that meeting with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Kathy Lee Gifford also talks about a time when her marriage was on the rocks and everything was falling apart in her home. And then being in Hollywood, she said, I sat in a theater when people were criticizing him for making a movie. He made an evangelistic movie. And she said, in that theater, hearing the gospel on a, on a live screen, I gave my heart to Jesus Christ at the appeal of Billy Graham. She's had him in her home, and she said, all my family has been saved by the message that Billy preached. Isn't that beautiful? You see, that's the gospel. Sometimes we are more concerned with real estate than we are with real eternity. We are consumers rather than Christians consecrated to create culture, kingdom culture. We must be more than consumers. We must be Christians who are consecrated to get the word out, to create kingdom culture in our nation, in our city, in our province. And we must pray for politicians. We must pray for each member of our community. And we must pray for those who lead especially because nations rise and fall on the back of leadership. Those who lead our churches, those who lead our nation, those who lead our provinces, we must be people of prayer for them. Amen? And I think that's why Billy Graham impacted so many presidents. He realized that those who lead our nation must be impacted themselves by the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? I want you to prepare that video. As we talk, uh, I won't have time to go through the whole message today. I was going to talk from it, but I want you to know one of the things that moved me was that Billy Graham's coffin, we were just in Louisiana, came back Saturday morning, that Billy Graham's coffin will be made by penitentiary state inmates, and he will be buried in a coffin that his wife was also made from that penitentiary in Louisiana. And on top of that cross, on top of that coffin is the cross of Jesus Christ. And that was his message. And his service on Friday will be held under a tent because that's where he started his ministry back in the day when he was a young man. There's so many truths we could share, and we may in, in time to come. As a farmer, 
who turned his gaze towards the fields and looked for the harvest. I want you to watch this video clip, and then we will bring the service to our close. Are you ready? As I look back over my life, it's full of surprises. I never thought I would become friends with people in different countries all over the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I want us to look at the cross tonight. I see how God's hand guided me. When I began preaching many years ago, it was not with any thoughts that I'd be preaching to large audiences. Come to the cross. His gospel is for everyone. God has done this. Right through the line. Modern America today, there is a vacuum of the soul. Our country's in great need of a spiritual awakening. Well, there have been times that I've wept as I've gone from city to city and I've seen how far people have wandered from God. Of all the things that I've seen and heard, there's only one message that can change people's lives and hearts. There is a way if you come by the way of the cross. The cross. The cross. I want to tell people about the meaning of the cross. Not the cross that hangs on a wall or around someone's neck. We receive our freedom purchased by the ransom at the cross. But the real cross of Christ. The cross expresses the great love of God for man. It's scarred and bloodstained. His was a rugged cross. His real purpose for coming was to die. I know that many will react to this message, but it is the truth. And with all my heart, I want to leave you with the truth. God says, I love you. I love you. I love you with an everlasting love. And he loves you willing to forgive you of all your sins. The cross is offensive because it confronts people. Even so, it's a confrontation that all of us must face. look out across an audience when I stand up to preach and I think of all the people with their different backgrounds and their various needs and I know that they are objects of God's mighty love to the point that he gave his son his only son to die upon a cross and the cross was the most terrible form of execution by the Romans for criminals. And Jesus endured all that in our place because of our sins. We deserve the cross. We deserve hell. We deserve judgment and all that that means. I know that there are many people that dispute that. People don't want to hear that they're sinners. To many people, it's an offense. The cross is offensive because it directly confronts the evils which dominate so much of this world. One reason that the cross is an offense to people is because it demands, it doesn't suggest, it demands a new lifestyle in all of us. Sin is a disease in the human heart. It affects the mind and the will and the emotions. Every part of our being is affected by this disease. How can we break this bondage? How can we be set free? God helps us break those chains. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. 
old things pass away. Everything becomes new. It can make you a totally new person. On that cross, God was laying on Jesus our sins. They not only put nails in his hands, but before that, they scourged him. A Roman scourge was a terrible thing. They took whips and pellets on those whips and beat a person almost to death. And then they took that cross and made him carry the cross, which was in his weakened condition was almost impossible. But he carried that cross to a place outside of Jerusalem. And then they put nails in his hands. But that was not the real suffering. The real suffering is when he said, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? In that terrible moment, he and God, the Father, were separated. He shed his blood, and the shedding of that blood carries with it God's very life. There is no other way of salvation except through the cross of Christ. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. The only way to the Father, Father God, is through his Son, Jesus Christ. Now, why Jesus? He's the only one that was born into this world without sin. But more than that, he was a righteous one. And when you come to him, you're clothed in his righteousness. God no longer sees your sin. He no longer sees your own heart. He sees Jesus. When you come to Christ, you come by the way of repentance. Repent means to change, to change your way of living and turn from your sins and turn to Jesus Christ and say, I'm a sinner, I need forgiveness. And I know that you're the only one that can change me. Today, I'm asking you to put your trust in Christ. I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer, sentence by sentence, after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I know that I'm a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you've died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins. I repent of my sins. I invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. He's alive. I've given my life not to a dead Christ, but to a living Christ. And he's given me a song to sing. He's given me a flag to follow. I have reason for existence. I know where I've come from. I know why I'm here. I know where I'm going. Do you? Amen. Powerful. I'm going to invite the music team to come back up. He said, I know where I am, where I'm going. I said in the Saturday night service last night, Louisiana. Louisiana, of course, as you know, is below sea level. So when they, when they have tombstones, come on in, folks. 
when they have tombstones there, when they bury the dead, they don't bury them six feet under because you would hit water. They bury them above ground. You know that 2005 Katrina went through and many of the gravestones and graveyards were flooded, flooded with water. And some of these caskets were floating. Scientists will tell you or try to tell you where you came from, or, but they can't tell you why you're here. They just can't tell you why you're here. And the moment when you breathe your last breath and you take that last sigh of breath and you close your eyes, science says you're no more. But God says you're still alive and you're still eternal. Because they can't tell you why you're here. They tell you how you may have got here, but not why you're here. And that's why, come on up, group. As we close, I want us to think about the message of the cross. The Bible says the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to those of us who are being saved, it is the power of God unto salvation. It is the power of God unto salvation. The message of the cross. It's foolishness to the one that is perishing because he's trying to understand it with his head and not it with his heart. God is reaching our hearts this morning. The core of our soul, our being of who we are. Amen. In 1910, a psychologist by the name of Dudard had coined the word moron. He used the Greek word moros, which means dull. And it's a derivative of this word foolishness. The message of the cross may be moronic to some, may be foolish to some, but to those who are being set free, from ourselves and by our sin nature and from all the wrestlings of pain inside of our life, Jesus came to set the captive free. He came to set me free. He came to set you free. So I want us to sing the same song that Billy Graham would sing in his crusades, Just As I Am. Can we sing that? Let's stand. Let's sing this song and then we will transition and welcome our guests. Sing it. Just as I am, Thou will receive, will welcome, pardon, cleanse, relief, because Thy promise I believe, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. 
Let's pray. Father, we're so grateful that you sent your son. And we're so grateful even for the legacy of Billy Graham. We pray for Franklin Graham, the family, as they will prepare and finish the details of this funeral, as it will be broadcast throughout the whole world. May our sons and daughters of nations come back to you. May there be a revival of the Word of God, the ministry of the evangelists, for which you died, Lord Jesus, that no man should perish, but they should receive the gift of eternal life by turning their hearts to you. And we even pray today here and through live stream that Holy Spirit, you will bring to convict and to convert the heart that is resisting this beautiful, glorious love of God and show them the power of God unto salvation, the power of God unto deliverance, to heal the soul of the hearts and thus heal the soul of our nation. We pray even now that you will call our friends and our families and neighbors back to you, Lord. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. God bless you. you. May be seated. Thank you, team. It's a great honor this morning. I'm going to invite Comer Khan to come up for a minute. Those of you who need a seat, you're welcome to take a seat. And uh, I understand uh, our PC leadership candidate is here. And uh, I'm just going to ask Comer. Would you welcome Comer? Thank you.